Kristen, and you're listening to Podcast and Amplify, a podcast for women entrepreneurs who want to amplify their voice and brand through podcasting and grow a wildly successful business. I'm the executive producer and host and an entrepreneur, and I love helping women grow their visibility, mindset, and business to the next level. Each week, I share tips on how to launch and leverage your podcast, and I'm bringing on the very best business leaders to give you advice on how to build your business empire. Let's amplify your voice and business. Welcome back to Podcast and Amplify. I am really excited to have our guest on this week. Her name is Rose Cox. She is the founder of the HSP Business School. She is also the host of the Sensitive CEO Show, and she's a business coach and a strategist. She's an advanced RTT therapist and clinical hypnotherapist. And Rose works with highly sensitive people, empaths, and introverts to really help them share their amazing gifts with the world and to kind of help them overcome those struggles that might (laughs) come with being more on the sensitive side. She helps with mindset and business strategies. So welcome to the show, Rose. Thank you, Kristen. It's wonderful to be on your show. I love your show. Thank you so much. So uh, Rose and I actually worked together a little bit um, at the very beginning of her podcast. And I think I was on your show in the one of the earliest episodes, right? Yes, you were. Yeah, you were one of my very first guests. Yeah. And so I've been enjoying continuing to listen to the show. She has fabulous guests. So definitely check out the podcast. So let's jump in and you know, tell me about a pivotal moment that led you where you are today to really creating this business that helps um, HSP. I think it's three years ago now. I I hosted my first online summit. I've done three now. Um, but when I hosted the first one, I in the middle, it was two weeks, a two-week summit. In the second week or the beginning of the second week, I suffered massive overwhelm and burnout. And I just, I'd been following this quite strict program to put on this summer and it, some of the methods didn't align with me. I'd already changed a few things that felt better, but it was just too much. And during that time, um, I managed to struggle over the finish line of the second week, but I really had to give up my all. But And during that time, I was listening to a podcast. I'm an avid podcast listener. And I listened to an episode um, of one of the podcasts I listened to with a guest called Julie Beeland, who was talking all about HSP and the trait of high sensitivity. And I'd never heard of it before. And everything she said just felt, oh my God, that's me. That is so me. So as I finished the summer, I dived into the topic of HSP and it's also known as sensory processing sensitivity. I read a number of books by Elaine Arrow and I did some courses and I just, I really dived into it and really got to know why I'd suffered this burnout and why I'd always, I guess, felt different from other people in business and not being able to follow certain strategies that, um, you know, quite popular or successful coaches were teaching other people. So that was a huge pivotal moment. I went on to host two more summits and they were both for HSPs only so well not only but they were for highly sensitive people they were both called the HSP Entrepreneur Summit and it just opened up a world to the various speakers that I met through the journey of hosting but it also made me realize there's so many people out there like me who had no idea about this trait and how they could actually use it to their advantage in discover the superpowers behind the trait rather than um, really suffer, which a lot of HSPs do because they feel so different from non-HSPs. Yeah, I think we live in a world that doesn't necessarily value or lift up that sensitive side of us. We live in a really loud world, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And I think because there's 
So 80% of the population are non-HSP. There's 20% of us, which is still over a billion, I think. Um, but it's quite a lot. Um, but the, most things, most programs, most environments, most things are set up for non-HSPs, and we'd, we are in the minority. Yeah, what you said around, you know, doing the the summit, you know, and, and doing just the activities in your business with a program that is very like, go, 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 and, mm-hmm. you know, push yourself. And um, I was definitely yeah. relating to that because I know like for launches, like I don't do launches really anymore because they're just, they're too much. And I don't function that way. And I, but it took me a while to kind of give them up because, you know, there's so much pressure to do things a certain way in in business. Yeah. So can you define for us what traits, you know, HSP have, and then, you know, are there tools to help us learn if we are HSP, one of the 20%? When I discovered it, when I heard about it, I went straight to Elaine Aaron's website, which is hspperson.com, and she's got a free quiz on there. And I think I got one question wrong. Well, not wrong, but I was like right up there at the top. Um, so that's one place I'd recommend if you if you feel um, that you might sit in this category, then I'd definitely go there. Um, but there's also things like... You know, if you feel affected by the environment, things like bright lights, and this is something I've always really struggled with, is lighting at nighttime, even car lights, if they're too bright coming towards me. Um, it's it's all the different senses. So smells, um, if you find yourself getting really overwhelmed by, you know, really strong smells, but at the same at the same time, really appreciating beautiful smells and appreciating the beautiful things. So for every every area, there's a a positive side if that makes sense. Um, and taking on board other people's emotions is a huge thing. So the empathy and being affected. You know, if you walk into a room, you know if someone is angry or happy or um, it's. Yeah, we so easily pick up other people's emotions. And something Julie Beelan shares also is if you think about a non-HSP, say there's say three lines of information that goes into their brain. For, for HSPs, there's about 50, there's over 50 lines of this information. So there's a lot coming in. There's a lot that we need to process. So if any of that resonates, I definitely recommend going to that website, doing that quiz. And there's so many fantastic resources that share our superpowers and our wonderful traits and how we can use them. I definitely can relate to picking up on people's emotions when you walk into the room. It's just an automatic sensing, Mm -hmm. oh, what's going on there? What's going on there? What's going, you know, and I, and I think it took me a while to realize like not other people, not everyone else does that, Yeah, <laughs> you know? So I was like, oh, okay, this is a interesting uh, trait. It's useful for sure. Like you said, everything has like a, like a beneficial side and maybe a little bit of a shadow side to it. Am I correct in saying that there's like a spectrum? Like it's kind of like that it's kind of like introversion, being an introvert where there's a spectrum that you fall on. Um, not really. I think I think you're either highly sensitive or you're not. Although some I think there's some areas that you're more sensitive to others. Um, there are extroverted HSPs. I think it's around thirty percent of the population of HSPs are extrovert, um, but seventy percent introvert. And with all the people I've met over the last few years they do tend to be more introverted. And funnily enough, a lot of INFJs in the Myers-Briggs. Yes. Are you INFJ? Yeah, I think I'm I'm INF. I can't remember the last one. J or P. P is common as well. Okay. So interesting. Um, so then how does that all play into, you know, being a business owner? You touched on it a little bit, how it affected you and your business and 
I kind of mentioned, you know, my experience in terms of like launching or just showing up on social media even, but how can we tap into those strengths? And then maybe how can we, when we come up with face those challenges that HSPs inevitably will come up against. Um, can you talk about that a little bit? What what I ended up doing with the second and third summit, I developed it in the way that I wanted to do it that I knew would work for me. So they were five days rather than two weeks, which was a lot easier on my nervous system. And I've I've carried that throughout my whole business in the last few years since I realize that the strategies that are so often out there aren't suited to us. So I've developed frameworks and I've worked with HSP coaches to help with the frameworks as well. So I really recommend to make it your own. So use a framework, but make it your own. So something else with the first summit was that it led straight into a masterclass a launch, another big launch straight after two week summer. And I just, no way. <laughs> I would have been under the covers in the fetal position. <laughs> yeah, I was, I pretty much was. I had really, really bad burnout. It took me about a month to recover from, from that. Um, it's so interesting that I did another two summits after that, but I just, I felt so passionate about helping others. And I knew if I could get speakers who were really experts. I had Julie Beeland, who was um, someone who I really look up to, and I've followed her for a while since I found out. And I just, I met the most amazing people. And I thought if I can share this with my audience so that they can really understand themselves, then yeah, that was kind of my passion. And actually, that's another business strategy that I know it's talked about a lot, but something I really I really recommend is getting really clear on your vision and your passion because so much of that is going to drive everything in your business and it's going to help you to feel aligned. So you're doing something that you want to do, not some something that someone has told you to do or that you think you should do. It's something that you really want to do. And then that yeah, that drives everything in your business. And that's something I teach in the business school because I think it's such a key thing. I think it's the foundation. I think other strategies are to set clear boundaries. So I only see clients on certain days. I only record podcasts on certain days. I have big buffers in between my calls. I take a lot of downtime um, in between clients and calls like this, I'll go out and I just went and stood on the grass, be foot on the grass. And I always giggle to myself because I always have to check for snakes <laughs> and um, not big ones, but little grass snakes, which are pretty harmless. But I always have a little giggle if the lawn's too long. So there, yeah, there's things like that. And I always have essential oils burning in my office. So having the um, the boundaries, but also having setting up your environment where you feel really comfortable. It sounds like it's being connected to what's really important to you, which I think that sensitive people can really do because they are really in tune with themselves. And I think that is so, so important. And like in your example, I feel that knowing that you were giving so much value to people that energized you, right? Instead of it draining you and the other example of the two week um, longer summit. And I love that you were able to go back to doing summits in your own way. And you found a way to just be connected to it and make it work for you, which I think is fantastic. Thank you. It, it felt really empowering to just make it my own. And I knew what I liked doing. I loved, I loved meeting other highly sensitive people. And I got to meet some incredible people from all over the world who I'm still really good friends with, still in touch with. So, um, and I mean, that's another really good business strategy for HSPs is to surround yourself with really supportive people who are like you and that who understand you. And I, yeah, I think that connection with the community is really, really important. Yeah, I think so too. I think a lot of the times we are community oriented and because we are you know, picking up on other people's energies. And I think when we find that maybe similar energy or something that connects, it, it's really, it really does. 
Um, I also hear your example too, that you listen to yourself and like what felt good for you. And we do, I think, tend to have very good intuition. And it's so important to lean into that and listen to that because we know what what's good for us. It's just a lot of times it's these other things externally that are saying, oh, we have to do this or we should be doing that. Yeah, exactly. And intuition is such a wonderful gift for highly sensitive people. But when we're in a state that we're overwhelmed or um, even comparing ourselves to others, that intuition's blocked, it it can't come in. So practicing the self-care, really looking after yourself is important to open up that channel for intuition to help you listen to yourself and listen to what energizes you and what feels true and right for you as well. Yeah. And you're so good at walking that talk. Um, I was listening to another interview that you did and I can't remember the podcast it was, but, you know, doing my little research and you were talking about your morning routine and it's detailed, everyone listening. Like it's, it's a serious routine, but um, it's, I was listening to him like, wow, she gets up that early. She does all these different things. And if you want to share, you can certainly share. But um, it, it just, the sense of it was like, you're taking care of yourself first every single day. And you're committed to doing that every day. And it's just, it felt like good hygiene. Do you know what I mean? Like good yeah. self-care hygiene. And I think that's something that highly sensitive people kind of need to incorporate into their their lives we need that sort of extra care from ourselves yeah it's so important and it's not something I used to do I would always put others first I think being a people pleaser is one of the HSP things as well Um, but learning learning that routine and doing doing things for myself as you say it I I think someone else says it in a way that if you fill your own cup first Mm. then you have more to give other people, but when your cup's empty, you've got nothing to give. And it's the same as the put your oxygen mask on first when we fly. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, we do need to, you know, fill our cups first and make sure we're not depleted and we have something to give. So important, I think for everyone, but definitely when you have that more sensitive nervous system, it's just even that, you know, important and, and helpful. Hey friends, we'll get back to the show in just a moment, but I wanted to take just a few seconds to invite you to a free workshop that I created. It's called Launch a Binge Worthy Podcast, and it's all about helping you to create a heartfelt podcast that reaches your soul listeners and grows your business. If you want access, just go to podcastandamplify.com. It's totally free. Okay, friend, back to the show. What are some of the challenges that could come up from being sensitive I think there can be a lot of times where you're misunderstood Mm. I mean maybe this is a question for other people listening who don't identify as HSPs how can they sort of be more supportive of people in their lives who are on that sensitive side who feel things deeply who experience the world deeply Um, because it's a beautiful gift like we have really rich lives right yeah but there's there's the other side where it's like we feel a lot and sometimes the world can be a really tough place to navigate through. So I don't know. Are there any things that you would tell people who aren't HSP how they can support those of us who are sensitive? I think understanding, you know, understanding about the trait and why we may feel overwhelmed. Like when I mentioned before about the three lines of information as opposed to the 50 to 100 even just knowing that we do have that sensory overload sometimes so having that awareness say from example my husband he's not hsp um if we go out to friends or something like i like it if it's just maybe one other couple um i don't like groups um so no, or yeah, knowing that, but also knowing when it's time to leave. It's like, and that's an introverted thing as well. But after an hour or two, 
it's been really good, but I'm ready to go home now. And things like bright lights, like I'm so affected by lighting, as I mentioned before. And if we go into a restaurant with bright lighting or even a friend's place, I've, I've actually got blue blocker glasses that I wear, but I don't take them out very often. I feel embarrassed. I don't know why. It's a bit, bit silly. But getting, you know, having my back to a light. So if, if you're with an HSP and you notice that they've got bright lights around them to maybe help them to move position, you know, move move chairs so you haven't um, got a bright light in your eyes. Yeah, having that awareness, that understanding that we do get overwhelmed and giving us plenty of space. So I love to hibernate. Like I'll, I'll just want to go and sit in the garden with my book. I love reading. I love learning. And my husband knows not to disturb me. Yeah, space is a big one. You were kind of making me think about the boundaries that you set, you know, talked about at the beginning of the show, days that maybe you walk out, or I know a lot of people will say, oh, have a um, automatic email that says, I only check my emails through this time you know, um, or I don't have calls on Mondays or Fridays. There are reasons why these boundaries are put up and not everyone operates that way in business. But um, when you do come across someone, it's kind of like, oh, okay, they might not get back to me right away, but they're taking care of themselves and that's what they need to do. Um, And then also you're reminding me as well, my husband is an extrovert and he's not a highly sensitive person either. So you're mentioning of, you know, it's time to go, (laughs) you know, like having those limits and how many people you want to be hanging out with. It's funny. I do check in with him. I'm kind of like, he'll ask me, oh, do you want to go hang out and do this? And my first question is, how many people are going to be there? (laughs) Yeah, Who's going to be there? You know, I just need to visualize And then I'll let you know what I'm going to commit to, you know, Mm. like, no, that's, I'm not, I'm good. I don't need to go, but you enjoy yourself. Have fun. Don't let me stop you from going or yes, I'll go, but I'll only go for this amount of time. And so, yeah, just being, it just helps to be aware of operate. And that way you can help other people to join you in (laughs) taking care of yourself and um, yeah. in the way that you need to be. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so what is your superpower? Oh, I would say, can I have two? <laughs> of course you can have as many as you want. <laughs> I, I love, um, resilience is one of, uh, it's an HSP trait. Um, not many people talk about it and I'm really passionate about it because I think that, like I'm I'm in my late 50s and so I've lived a lot of my life not knowing that I am an HSP and so I've been living in this world for all these years you know an environment that's been made for non-HSPs so I've become very resilient and not just in business but in life in general things in life so resilience is a huge one the other big one is intuition I just I love my intuition I think it's been It's been a major benefit for my businesses over the years. And I didn't know, I just thought everyone had it. I thought everyone could sort of read people and see their potential and things like that. But it's just something I really, really love. And I even use it with my husband sometimes. (laughs) I love that. Yeah, intuition. It's such a beautiful gift. Yeah. Um, And it's, yeah, something... I definitely don't take for granted because you're right. Not everyone is so in tune with that part of themselves and it doesn't always come naturally, but you can always tap into it, find ways to do that. Um, And resiliency, that is so, I mean, it's such a great superpower. And as you were saying it, I'm like thinking about all the ways that highly sensitive people do have to be resilient because you're kind of fighting against your natural way of being in in so many scenarios. And and you're so right. You build up this like, okay, I'm going to go through the world, but I got to figure out how to, yeah, how to keep going and do it. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, when I discovered the trait, it just kind of gave me even more permission because I already had that resiliency built up, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it just made me realize 
how much I had really grown and become resilient. Yeah. Yeah. Through just being how you naturally are and not being quite knowing. Bunch. And then, yeah, I mean, so you ended up getting the bonus of understanding yourself more, like once you found out your HSP and then also all the resilience that you built up, you know, the time that you didn't now. So that's fantastic. Um, and then how can people find out more about you? Um, so my website is rosecox.com. Very simple. Um, I've also got the hspbusinessschool.com. There's no the in the URL. It's hspbusinessschool.com. Um, and sensitive ceo.show is my podcast or you can find the podcast on any um, podcast app and on socials the links are in my website if anyone wants to follow me on instagram or i've also got a facebook group for thrive it's called thriving hsp entrepreneurs and there's around well there's over 800 of us in the group and it's a really lovely community where I love people to promote their offers and whatever they're working on so that we can all share with each other what what we've got coming up. We will link to all of your places in the show notes. And yeah, you're so great at building community and building community for this, you know, really special group of humans that exist in the world. And it's just very inspiring. So Thank you so much for coming on today and sharing what you know and how you help HSPs. Uh, I think it's going to be really helpful for our listeners and we can be that way and thrive in our businesses as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Kristen. It's been so lovely talking with you again today. I love that chat. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. So if you found this episode really valuable, I'd love for you to head on over to Instagram and share your big takeaways, any aha moments that you had and tag me at podcast and amplify. If you have any questions, make sure to hit me up in the DMs. And if you have any friends or fellow entrepreneurs who you think would get a ton of value from the show, make sure to share this episode with them. Your recommendations and your reviews are really what help grow this podcast. And we are always so grateful for your support. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next week.